at all, in this video, we are going to learn about if else statements. So when we want to use if else, or how do we know that we have to use if else? When we want to make any decisions or a decisions, or when we want to compare, compare maybe A or B, a larger number, smaller number, okay, then we will use if else statements. Let's say example one, write a program that compares two integers, A and B. We want to compare A and B integers. So if A is greater than B, we display A is greater than B. Otherwise, we display B is greater than A. Very simple example. Huh? So in such a case, for the declarations part, we have to declare two integers. And in my case, I put 5 assigned to integer A, a variable A, and then 6 assigned to variable B. For the if-else case, this is the syntax that we use. If, we type if with the bracket or parenthesis, and then A larger than B. We want to know whether it is larger than or smaller than. So we use this symbol. And then we put the curly bracket, curly bracket. In between of curly bracket, there is a statement called C out. We will display A larger than B. So in this case, if if A is larger than B, we will see out this statement. Or else, we put else and then curly bracket. C out will be B larger than A. This is how we solve uh, the example. Okay. So before we go to the coding part, it is important to not date when we write a code in if else, we should have a good practice where we should uh, have uh, a vertical line. We, uh, we arrange them vertically so that we know which belong to um, which nested nested if, okay, which statement belong to which uh, nested if. And in case if if um, you only have one statement after if conditions or else conditions, the curly bracket is not very important, okay, because the compiler we know that. Okay, from this line, if, after the if line, I will go to the C out, which is this statement. Then I will find the next. But if, if you have more than one statement inside one if case, then we must have this curly bracket. Okay, it's a must. Otherwise, the compiler will make a mistake. I hope uh, you, you, can, you can remember this. You must remember this. And when we do comparisons, we always use relational operators. So what are the relational operators in math, mathematics? Always use this symbol, but in C++, larger than, nothing change, nothing difference, we use this one. But for larger or equal to, we use this symbol, larger or equal to. And then smaller, smaller, less than or equal, which is this one. And if we want to compare whether A equal to B, we use this one, double equal. Okay. And if we want to compare whether A is not B, then we have to use this symbol, not symbol. Example A shows that write a program that compare two integers A and B. What should we do? We declare A and B as integer, and I initialize A and B variables as four and six. If A is greater than B, if A is greater than B, what should we do? We display A is greater than B. This is the message we are going to display. We are going to display, so we use C out. This is the message. And this part is not complete. If A is greater than B, if A is greater than B, then we see out. Otherwise, which means else, we display B is greater than A. We use C out. Let me call it. Right? Let's try. Compile and run. It shows that B is greater than A. Let's check. B is 6, A is 4. So B is greater than A. It's true. And then what if I change variable A is 10? Compile and run. Now it changed to A is greater than B. A is 10, B is 6. So A is greater than B. The second example said write a program to display grade A if marks larger or equal to 80, B if larger than 60, C more than or equal to 40, and then grade E if marks less than or equal to 40. So let's try with the programming. Back to the questions. Write a program to display this one, grade A if marks larger than this and so on. But it didn't say we get input user, user input or we declare it. So to each tax we declare it. We declare input number. 
as any number and then grade a if mark larger or equal to a b so for this we change the if statement if mark max so which means that we are going to use the max variable we replace the input num as max larger than or equal larger than or equal we use this symbol a b then what should we do we will display grade a see out grade a or else if grade b if max is larger or equal to 60 so you may have if if max larger than 60 then grade b if mark larger than 40 then grade c if less than less than 40 then it is grade e okay but in this case we cannot just put if 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 and if why because if we put like this, if we check if marks larger than 80, if this condition is true, then it will see out grade A. And then it will go to the third line, if mark larger than 60 again, and then it will see out grade B. So if our marks variable is 100, which means that it fulfills the first rules, second rules, and the third rules, it will display grade A dot, grade B dot, and grade C. So in order to solve these problems, we have to put else else if then if we check if we check for the whole loop we put else and else if we check for the whole system if one of the case is fulfilled then it will jump to the uh, last line which is this line it will not go through every um process or every checking system okay let's try and run it shows a great a that's great what if i put 65 our integer mark is 65 compile and run it shows b b more than 60 is b correct what about 40 compile and run it will show grade c grade c because this one larger than 40 and now if we change to 39 and compile run if we show it is grade e because it's profile marks less than 40. i hope this is clear this is how we solve this example and what if back to if you do not understand why we have to include the else you may remove it and try you may remove it and try and then now we put the value 100. what will be happened shows grade a grade b grade c as i said just now it fulfill this one it will check this one it will check the third one and then it will check the fourth one whenever it is fulfilled it will see out so in order to solve this we must use l is else if and i don't put the curly bracket this round for each of the if because only one line because only one line of the statements for this if one for each line The third example is a little bit complicated. Although grade A, B, C, D, E, this part is same, but we have one more condition, which is other conditions. The input value must be a positive integer. Must be a positive integer. So which means if it is not positive, it is negative, then we will display a wrong message. Let's try it. We have one more condition in this case. Other conditions, the input value must be positive. So we need another if statement to check whether the input is positive or not. In such a case, we don't have to declare. Well, we get the input. We get the inputs. Use the input, then only we can test the value easier. Declare, and then we see out. Enter an integer. We see in to max. So now it's done, it's completed. If I compile run, it will work, but I want to include this one to check whether the particular value is positive integer. So positive integer means larger than zero. Such 
we put conditions if mark larger than zero. Larger than zero, then only I will check. Or else I will not check this if. So I remove it, I cut and paste. I cut, cut and paste it now. So we can see this is one if statement. This is another if statement, a big if statement. So what will happen if, if it is larger than zero, meaning it is positive, we will check. Or else, or else we will display another message. You have entered a negative integer. Now let's try to compile and run the program. Enter an integer. So let's say if I enter five, which is positive integer, it will show grad E. If we check, if we check it is larger than zero or not, if it is yes, and then it will perform this checking. The second if statement. And what if, compile run again, what if we insert negative number? So over here, if it is negative number, it will go to else. So let's say negative nine. So if we display, you have entered a negative integer. So this is how we add on if statements to this if statements so that it can perform the tax for checking extra, uh, extra checking tax. And this is what we call as nested if. One if in another, one set of if in another set of if statements. I hope this example is clear. And of course, we may improve the code. Um, by checking not only positive integer, maybe in some of the cases, the user will insert not integer, a character probably. So if user has entered a character, then what should we do? We have to make sure that this cin variable is legal, is fulfill the rules. If fulfill the rules, then only we will check it. If it does not fulfill the rules, then we will not check it. In such a case, we can insert if statements to check whether our input is valid. If cin.fail is true, means that the input given is not integer, then what should we do? We can see out wrong input. After that, we can insert return one. The purpose of return one means that terminate the program. You don't have to do other works. Or else, or else, mean if the input is correct, then we will do the checking. So this part, up to this part, we can copy and paste it here. So end up, it will check. The system will check whether the, the input value is valid or not. If not, it will see out. The message or else it will do the checking. Let's try compile and run the program. Enter an integer. If I enter 10, it will show the results grad E. But if I enter something else, maybe I enter K as my input, or maybe like this, okay, a, a word, enter, it will say wrong inputs. So the cin.fail is to check whether the inputs failed to achieve the variable declarations. I hope you have enjoyed this exercise. Thank you very much for watching this video.